Hey guys, Pete from Global Golf here, uh, hanging out at the Ping booth here at the PGA Show. Special guest today, John Cape Solheim, president of Ping Golf. Thanks for coming with. Not a problem. Hanging out with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about Ping's journey as a company? Like where you guys have been, where you are now, kind of where you guys foresee being in the future? Well, that's a big question. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we got 20 minutes? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would say we really started out as an innovation company. Yeah. Karsten Solheim, my grandfather, uh, picked up the game of golf kind of late in life. He was an engineer um, and just kind of saw a lot of opportunities to improve golf equipment. I would say most notably heel toe weighting, so perimeter weighting, mm -hmm. putters, cavity back irons. Um, so we really were founded on innovation, had a lot of success with I2 irons, answer putters, um, and grew exponentially for several years. You know, we were founded in 1959. I think I think we had our big growth in like the 1980s. Mm -hmm. um, then I say kind of that we kind of had some struggles there in the 90s. We had a lot of competitors come in saw our market share go down. I would say, if anything, got a little behind the times. We were late with metal woods. We, you know, we had wood woods, nice big oversized wood woods in the day, but metal woods came out, so we were a little late. And then I think we've evolved as a company and kind of got back to those roots to lead innovation standpoint. Um, so I think that kind of brings us to where we are today, where we've got you know the best drivers in the industry, great, great lineup of all our products really focused on pushing that performance envelope with every product that we bring out. Yeah, and you mentioned, obviously, the family history that you guys have uh, with your grandfather and your father, and now you, under your leadership. You know, why is that family environment so important to the success of your company? You know, to me, I've always said there's pluses and minuses to being family-owned and private. A lot more pluses than there are minuses. Yeah. Um, but to me, the biggest thing is we, we can make our own decisions. We don't have to answer to anybody else. We have, you know, some key values that are important to us and we can always put those first, you know, like the performance of the product, taking care of our employees, mm -hmm. uh, just doing the right things. We can always rely that we're going to do that because we have nobody else to answer to but ourselves. So you mentioned kind of talking about the history uh, of the company, the, the innovation that you guys have been able to achieve. And that's really down to your R&D. And yep. you guys have sort of a unique R&D process. you got to take us through that. Uh, yeah, so you're talking about how we, uh, I gotta, we, we test and design that yep, kind of yep, philosophy. So, yeah, exactly. so, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. so yeah, that was something I, I actually was running engineering when we, we came up with that strategy. Where in the past we were very iterative. So we developed prototypes. It was kind of a design and hope. So you design it, then you'd go out and test it, and it either work or it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't work, you had to redesign it again. So we kind of flipped the whole model upside down and we just said we need to do a lot of testing really just enhance our knowledge of what works, what doesn't work. So when it comes time to design that new product, we already have all the answers. We have this knowledge that we can go to from all the testing we've done and build our prototypes. We still test the prototypes, but we, we get the results we expect when we build the prototypes because we're designing from that knowledge that we yeah, have. Yeah, it makes it kind of easier process, as not it? Yeah, so it's not iterative nearly as much. Yeah. Every once in a while, now these days, it's more like manufacturing issues pop up that we didn't anticipate, so we have to figure out how to resolve those. But it definitely, you know, we're confident we can beat last product, you know, the G400, and we designed the G410, and we see we validate the results. And you guys use even some of your employees in that testing process, right? Oh, definitely. I'm out on the range probably two or three times a week yeah. uh, as a player tester, and I remember I had to send out the email to the company like, hey, when you make a meeting for these player tests, you need to go out there. It's yeah. important because you're creating very valuable knowledge for yeah. our company. So yeah, uh, and we've got a good mix. We've got a good mix of really good golfers. We've got average golfers and beginner golfers. So depending on the product that we're mm -hmm. developing, we bring the right employees in to test that product. Awesome. And how much is tour staff involved in that testing process? Um, you know, it depends on the product, but I would say quite a bit. Um, obviously, like a game improvement iron or something, not as much. They will all get the chance to hit it and provide yeah. feedback and stuff. Um, but like when it comes to a new driver, or new wedges, we get them highly involved, and you know they're hitting prototypes, giving us feedback. Um, even and then you know a lot of their feedback of like they've been hitting G400s or you know eye blade irons, and we get their feedback when we go to design the next one. You know, what are the tour players looking for? And we incorporate that into the next design. Gotcha. So, speaking of product, you guys just 
launched an exciting new product, the G410 line. Yep. You know, what excites you the most about that product line? Uh, so I'll give you the a broad, like every product, the yeah. fact that we were able to kind of really raise the bar in performance in every product. Yeah. So the irons, substantially more forgiving in a more compact design. Hybrids and fairway woods go substantially further than mm -hmm. their predecessors do. Uh, the drivers got way more fitting options, so we're going to be able to beat our past drivers and everybody's drivers from a performance standpoint, not only on distance, but even more so on accuracy with this driver. Uh, and the new crossover, we went to a much more compact design, so that's that great blend of an iron and a hybrid. Um, so really a utility type club uh, for that golfer who's looking for like that one long iron. Yeah, and Ping has been a, a big proponent of fitting you know, throughout your history, really. So take us through that evolution of that fitting process from where you started to, to now the color code charts and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, so we take a lot of pride in fitting. We actually just promoted uh, Marty Jerkson, who was our director of design, to yeah. now he's our VP of fitting and performance. So he's really focusing on what, what next generation fitting looks like. We have great fitting processes now, but we're always pushing, the, pushing harder to get better and better. With the new G410, I just went through the per, uh, wood fitting, mm -hmm. and it was a fabulous experience. What I really liked about it is, with just with that one head, with the more adjustability we have on the loft, and the ability to make it flat, and the weight adjustability to control the ball flight right to left, I was able to, uh, you know, beat my G4. I was really happy with my G400 driver, yeah. and I was kind of shocked at how much I beat it by. And I could see just through the fitting process, it was just they had the more levers to dial in that fitting and get that club specifically designed for my club swing. So as a consumer, if I want to go out and I want to actually, I can't get to a fitter, per se, like, how important is it to be able to, like, actually, <laughs> Are you living on an island somewhere, yeah, right. <laughs> or where, where are you at? No, just as an example, like, if you can't make it to, like, a really certified, you know, ping fitter, um, be able to actually experience that on a course versus hitting in, like, into a screen, into a track man. Oh, yeah, I yeah. would always say outside's better than inside. Yeah. So, um, just because, yeah, like one, if you're getting fit for an iron, the yeah. actual, hitting out actual turf makes mm -hmm. a big difference. Get, you know, more what's that sensation going to be like on the golf course for you. Um, but with that said, I wouldn't give up launch monitor data. Of course, So I'd, yeah. I'd want to be on a course seeing what it actually looks like with a launch monitor if I could have everything. Yeah. Obviously, not everybody, you know, can't get that or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there are lots of level of options of fitting you can do to get the product right for you. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time today, and uh, thanks for coming in. Go check out some Ping products, and uh, thanks again. Thank you. Yeah.